you have a quote, and I want to ask you what this means. Yeah. You wrote, I've never taken a risk that didn't pay off in yeah. one of my favorite forms of currency experience. Yeah. Was taking this role in The Chosen a risk? I think accepting it with four days to memorize the biggest scene was one of the biggest risks I've ever taken. So I'd say yes. Uh, I wasn't, I was sold on the writing when I auditioned for season one, so I didn't question the the validity, the validity of the, uh, or the integrity of the writing, which is kind of what always gonna bring me to the script. I, I, if I don't have to work for it, then, then that's not a risk, right? But when I was informed that uh, I had four days, I had been cast, will you do it? And I was like, all right, let's go do this. So you, did you shut your phone off? You just like, don't talk to anybody, don't go out to eat, don't order Uber Eats, just kind of hole up in your, mm -hmm. Place. You become like a Zen master with one thing and one thing only. And you know, credit to to Dallas. He's like, I knew you could do it, and I was like, I didn't. <laughs> well, he didn't shut his phone off because I messaged him he as soon me. as he landed, and I'm like, Hey, you're my new brother, and we like hung out immediately. Sons yeah. of thunder. Yes. Yeah. That's, uh, that's lightning, lightning not a not a lightning like a struck. <laughs> Crashing sounds. Yeah. I mean, two very uh, integral characters in scripture. But you've said, uh, George, first of all, you've played George Stephanopoulos, one of my former colleagues at ABC News. Oh, cool. um, yeah, I used to work for Good Morning America. Now I host a show on News Nation in, out of Chicago. But, but George, you played John Travolta. Mm -hmm. Now you're playing this character that's known throughout the churches around the world. And you've called this the best role of your life. Yes. Why? Well... I think when you come on set and you, you, so what you see from the disciples on screen is what you get off of it. We are a family and it's not just the actors, um, you know, whether it's, you know, Jonathan as Jesus, the disciples, Mary Magdalene, Tamar, all the characters from the show, it's also the crew. Everyone is one big family. And when I come to set every single day, we're in season four, halfway through season four now. That is the halfway point of this series. Mm. Um, I, I actually had some friends visit and uh, they were just blown away. Some friends from Australia visit the set and just see how massive it was. And it's just grown in front of me. I haven't really paid attention to it. I did take a step back and look at it and I'm like, wow, how lucky am I? And that's why it's the best role of my life. I get to come to work work i get to come to play as yeah. dallas says here, we, here play. we play i come to play and it doesn't feel like a job it just feels like hanging out with my friends hanging out with family we all hang out together we go shopping together we're like legit brothers off we actually have to text each other and make sure we're not wearing the same thing like what? to this interview i, mess I messaged you this morning like i actually r reminded you him you see how close this is I also reminded him, this. don't wear the same shirt you wore the other day. He's like, I'm wearing green today. I'm like, I'm wearing green. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, you guys are so bro -y. You yeah. you, you go shopping together. First of all, I love that you love to shop yeah, as men, because there's a lot of men that don't like to shop. No, they buy, they don't shop. Yeah, but you guys like peruse and like have hours. like each other's opinion in mind when you pick out items. Do you say, oh, how do you think I'll look in this? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Oh, he, he's given me a lot of pointers as well because I just wanted to go to like a red carpet in like you know sneakers, and he's like, no, no, we got it, we got to dress up. I'm like, show me, Big Brother. Show I like me. color. I like color. <laughs> I see this dynamic uh, in the show, which I think is great because a lot of times you don't see the dirty work in relationships, and these disciples don't necessarily find each other as friendly as yeah. you would maybe think. You know, with the love of God and all of that in play. I mean, there's some there's some haterade and there's some people who don't get along and, and Matthew is just scorned. Mm -hmm. So how do you how do you come together on this cast so new and not kind of look at each other and think, Oh, who does he think he is? or have a little bit of friction. I think that a, a good sign that you are getting along is that you can have those moments, right? Because if you if you can't have those moments, then it stays actually really cold for too long and you don't really get to know that person and the work doesn't go any further than that. You know, so if you can have those disagreements and hopefully move past it, I think it's actually an indicator that you're closer than you know, and you just have to iron out those differences with that person and see where that takes you. Are you married? I'm, enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're very wise. Uh, I'm probably like made of old stuff. You are. Yeah. No, that's I've never heard anybody break it down like that. George, do you agree? I mean, well, I would say that if there's anything that needs to be ironed out, it's lucky that we all love playing board games. So I think everybody true. in the cast has gotten around a table or a video game at one stage. And uh, if we need some competitive edge, we can always just uh, play a game of uh, anything you want, monikers or, uh, 
you know, there's we can play Su Super Smash Brothers on the Nintendo. Which you were you the one that won? No, Noah. It's Noah. Noah. Noah tries to he yeah. tries to teach me. He's I'm like his Padawan. He's trying and, to teach and me. And I try to hang on, but I, I can't keep up. These mm. they're really good. And Noah's better than George. Sorry, but uh, so much better. <laughs> He loves you though. Yes. He means that in love. Yes. What's the biggest misconception about the chosen? That we somehow uh, represent only one perspective, or that we're somehow myopic in our representation. When I think honestly, we are uh, probably the most authentic representation of a historical Jesus that you can find anywhere. And and we we are looking at the life of Jesus through the people that knew him best and that's why it's called i always say it's called the chosen not the jesus it's because <laughs> we are looking at the series through and it's a lot of other you know maybe other projects uh, dealing with this subject matter have and and they've, i'm sure they've been successful and they've been great but what has made this such a global hit is that we usually see from jesus's perspective and there's actually an incredible scene uh which you know says to my point about the perspective where uh simon peter you know collapses to his knees and looks up to Jesus and says, you know, you are my Messiah. And uh, Jesus doesn't speak to him from above. He actually gets down on one knee and that's when he says, follow me. Mm -hmm. And that's a perspective we've never seen before. That's what's made the show so incredible. And that's why people relate to these disciples and Jesus because it's on our eye level. It's on our perspective. Do you get as moved by Jonathan Rumi's performance or display as the audience does all the time and i say this as well i don't know i hope people get the same experience we get however i'll try and articulate it as best i can i mean some people sit down and watch the show for an hour or they might watch the episode several times two hours three hours we do this six months of the year we get take after take we get to listen <clears throat> to jonathan delivering powerful words preaching about love playing with it finding different angles on it getting deeper in certain moments but the we, words are the same yeah and yeah. uh, what a privilege. It, it is so moving. And I've never heard these words spoken like this before. And you can read it in, in, you know, in, in the Bible. And uh, you, know, you can understand it that way. But we give the audience that opportunity to experience what we experience, which is listening to it and letting it affect you in your heart. And with that, we put a bow on it. This Sunday, watch The Chosen at 8, 7 central. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.